Hello my soccer universe. When you watch the international coverage of the Europa League, it seemingly is all about either the Turkish teams or United or, as in this week, both of them. Galatasaray, of course, are a big draw. They had another crazy game and, you know, the charm of the Turkish league is that you find a lot of players most of the time that have been played in big leagues not too long ago. So I kind of understand that. I also understand that United, the train wreck that they are, that of course produces headlines because they're also one of the biggest names in the competition. Uh, tweeted now United had to go to Fenerbahce to face their former coach Mourinho and it was just undeniable that everyone will be talking about and Mourinho played right to the crowd. The pre-match press conference even saying well if City is gonna be charged and docked points then actually United should be champions and he's due a bonus from United. Watch that space. That might be actually fun. The actual game that a little bit under-delivered, I would say, I would even argue it was an okay performance by United. Of course, Fenerbahce fans wanted to get that penalty that saw Mourinho get sent off. But that clouds all the good stories. For instance, Bode, seven points, winning against two Portuguese opponents. That's a huge story to me. Lazio sitting top of the table. No one expected that. Yes. Schedule definitely had something to do with it, with Roma actually getting a win. We had another big name in Ajax getting a big win again. And they have a certain Wout Weghorst up front, which I think makes Ajax really, really interesting. So with the preamble, let's join me for a little review of the games. You also see the current standings while I'm displaying those games. And then we look at how will the Europa League pan out from there on. And also look forward to what we'll see on match day four. We already had two games on Wednesday with quite some interesting results. Bodo love Portuguese teams. After beating Porto at home on the first match day, they now went to Braga, winning 2-1. They took a lead in the 53rd minute that Nierkete equalized 10 minutes later. However, he got sent off. That allowed Bode to surge up and they got the winner in the 94th minute through Nielsen. And then there was a truly mad game between Galatasaray and Ellsberg, where Galatasaray had a 3-0 halftime lead. Icardi, a Patterson own goal, really weird one, and Ilmas scoring. <laughs> However, then by the 65th minute, Ellsberg had put two back. It is then Agün with a very nice individual effort that reestablished a two-goal lead for Galatasaray. However, Larsen pulls one back in stoppage time. And wouldn't you know it, Roma get their first Europa League win, a 1-0 home over Dynamo Kiev, Dovbik, a Ukrainian converting a penalty, not much to talk about, but I think overall deserved. Frankfurt also get a 1-0 home win, however it was a very pedestrian effort against RFS from Latvia, who even had a big chance to equalize by hitting the underside of the crossbar in stoppage time. Really heroic efforts by them. In the end, it's a Larsen goal late on that gave Frankfurt the three points. In a rather open match, it's an early own goal by Bombito that give Ferenc Varus the three points against Nice in Maccabi Tel Aviv's temporary home ground in Belgrade. Real Sociedad get a fully deserved 2-1 win. They were full control. Pacheco Gomez scoring the goals early on, late on. Turgman pulls one back for Maccabi. In a classic hipsters matchup, Midtjylland beat Union saint Julius 1-0 through an early Jao goal in the 18th minute. Pilsen shocked Pauk and led a relatively deserved 2-0 at the half time and then it looked for a long time that they might hold out of it. It's a Dwey red card that then allowed Pauk to get back into the game. They pull a goal back in the 84th minute to Tisualdi and then Babo deep in stoppage time. Salvage is a point for Pauk. And Ajax were definitely helped by an early red card through Karabakh. Kenneth Taylor in a nice interplay with Wout Weghorst gets the lead for Ajax. Then Karabakh actually held their own in the end. It's a Wout Weghorst penalty that sells the game for Ajax and Akbom adds a third just three minutes later. Before another Karabakh player is getting his marching orders. All hopes for Ludogorets to gain a point from Anderlecht were dashed when in the 30th minute Vidal was sent off for elbowing an opponent. 67th minute Edozi wills it over the line for Anderlecht and Raya adds a second one in stoppage time. However, can someone please explain to me why Anderlecht are playing in those awful greenish jerseys instead of the purple at home? That's a question I'm really interested in. Meanwhile, Athletic Club get a messy 1-0 win over Slavia Brava thanks to deflected Nico Williams shot in the 33rd minute 
minute. Despite not doing much for the game, Porto took a halftime lead through a stoppage time goal by Jalo, despite Hoffenheim creating more chances. And then Samu adds a second one, but it was an improved performance in the second half for Porto. In the marquee fixture of the round, Eriksen gave United the lead in the 15th minute with a nice shot after a really nice attack move via Garnacho and Xerxy. However, it was Onana who needed to make a few saves and Aziri then gets the equalizer for Fenerbahce in the 49th minute. Probably should have had a penalty. It incensed Mourinho so much that he was actually sent off with a direct red card. And in the end, it's a 1-1 one -one draw. The third Istanbul team, Besiktas, don't mention upset at Lyon. Lyon dominated the game for most of the time, even hit the crossbar, but then it's Fernandes in the 71st minute that give Besiktas the lead in a late surge, but it was overall a rather lucky one. Not luck, but really good defending, so Olympiakos get a 1-0 win at Malmö. El Kavi, who else scoring the winning goal in the 30th minute? He even could have doubled the lead, but he put his penalty in the 83rd minute wide. Václav Czerny was the big hero for Rangers in the 4-0 destruction of FC. CSP. He assisted the first one through Lawrence, scored a nice one in the 31st minute to double the lead and then with a great solo in the 55th minute he made it three late on. Egerman scored the last one for Rangers. It was very much a professional win for Spurs. 1-0 over AZ. The game was actually quite open. AZ held their own. It's a penalty by Richarlison that settles the game and tries the might. AZ could not equalize. Actually Wolf even got sent off with a second red card. But after three match days, it is Lazio who are sitting top of the table. Admittedly, they only played the weak opponent so far. The game was definitely tilting towards Lazio when goalie Unostal was sent off for being the last man. Then Lazio scored an offside goal. Pedro's go-ahead goal after Vecino Cross was also given offside. However, it wasn't. Lazio take the halftime lead after dominating that half. Yes, with a late surge, trying to try to get an equalizer, but they caught on a counter-attack where Isaacson then slots it home in the 87th minute. It. And as I said, Lazio, top of the standings. Lazio may be the current league leaders, however, it is Spurs that are expected to win the overall group table here. There are also some notable names up there Galatasaray and Ajax Athletic Club, who will host the final in fifth place. And then come the teams that you would expect a little bit higher. You like United only sitting in 12th. Porto, not having a great season, admittedly, only in 13th. And Roma only in 16th. That's rather, rather low, I would argue. Also, my beloved Pauk in this competition is only sitting in 30th. Yeah, the home games did not pan out as they would have hoped for. However, United are still second favorite to win the entire competition, but they're lagging now already behind Spurs. Lazio is still up there, Athletic Club having a final at home also. Roma, of course, as well. However, the Roma, as we know, is a pretty big train wreck at the moment. Let's see, maybe Europe is the one chance where they actually can get a big trophy. I'm highly doubtful about that one, though. I also want to point out there's OL in there. There is, of course, Galatasaray. Yes, the star power is intriguing. I just don't quite see it. Either Frank or Sociedad, maybe. I would think that Real Sociedad would love to win a final in Bilbao. Also, don't quite see it. I think one of the Premier League teams should win it. However, I could see Lazio making a run. But you know, we have to see. Lazio has to face a big opponent first as well. I think this competition is wide open, even though it all points to Spurs. And we know Postecoglou has said that he always wins a title in his second season. And I think this is the title that he might be eyeing for. If I had to pick only one game for the early and for the late slot, I think it's pretty clear what will be the early one. Galatasaray hosting Spurs. I think this is a very intoxicating match. We also have the late slot Lazio, the leaders against Porto. I think this is bound to be a big one. Other games... Frankfurt against Slavia sounds interesting, at least to me. We have Olympiakos taking on Rangers, Nice against Twente. I think those could be competitive matches. Roma have to go to Union saint julius Will there be another upset there? Ajax, who like to display Israeli flags among the fans, are hosting Maccabi Tel Aviv. That, from that point of view, is interesting. We also have United taking on Pauk. Pauk should do a miracle there, I hope.
So that was it from me from match day three of the Europa League. I'm still having to get the feel for this competition, honestly. Not quite sure who are the big favorites. It seems to be wide open. And yes, if in doubt, always go for the Premier League teams. But both of these teams seem flawed. But the same is true, I think, for the two Spanish teams. Also for the two Roman teams in the competition. And yeah, German teams, Frankfurt is good in the league, but not so much in the Europa League so far. So yeah, take it for what it is. Any case, let me know your thoughts on the Europa League. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!